Have you ever wondered why your relationships sometimes seem more like a battlefield than a haven of mutual understanding? Well, let's talk about the expectation trap. You see, expectations are like quicksand. They may seem harmless at first, but before you know it, they can pull you down into a sea of disappointment and resentment. When we impose our expectations on others, we unwittingly create a recipe for discord. It's like setting a trap for both ourselves and the other person. And this isn't limited to just personal relationships. Expectations can wreak havoc in professional settings too. We're going to delve into 10 common expectations that you should never impose on anyone. These are the pitfalls that can turn any relationship sour. We're talking about the mind-reading myth, the change game, the approval chase, the happiness handout, the perfection illusion, the unconditional availability, the constant agreement, the responsibility shift, and the reciprocity rule. So buckle up as we navigate the treacherous terrain of expectations. Diving in, let's burst the first bubble, the mind-reading myth. Now we've all been there expecting others to just get us to understand our thoughts, our feelings, our intentions without us having to say a word. It seems like a sweet deal, doesn't it? But alas, it's a myth, a figment of our imagination that can lead to misunderstandings, hurt feelings and strained relationships. Consider this, you're upset about something and your friend walks in. You're hoping they'll notice, ask you what's wrong, but they don't. You feel ignored, uncared for. But here's the catch, they're not mind readers. For all they know, you might just be having a bad hair day. It's crucial to understand that communication is the bridge to understanding. Expressing our thoughts and feelings clearly helps build stronger relationships. So let's bid farewell to the mind reading myth. Remember, communication, not telepathy, is the key. Next up is the change game. Picture this, you meet someone, you get along, but there are a few quirks you'd rather do without. So you subtly or not so subtly try to change them, to mold them into your perfect vision. This, my friends, is a dangerous game. You see, everyone is a unique blend of traits, experiences and perspectives, shaped by a lifetime of experiences. To expect someone to change is to ask them to shed their skin, to renounce their very essence. It's not only unfair to them, but it's also a disservice to you. Instead of trying to change people, try understanding them. Learn to appreciate their quirks, their idiosyncrasies. It's in these differences that the beauty of human connection lies. If you find yourself constantly wishing someone were different, perhaps it's time to question if they're the right person for you. Because remember, acceptance, not alteration, fosters true love. Moving on, we stumble upon the approval chase. Picture yourself running relentlessly on a never-ending treadmill, gasping for breath, yet the finish line keeps moving farther away. That's what constant approval seeking feels like. It's a futile race, my friends, because the truth is you can't please everyone, and you shouldn't have to. Imagine a world where your worth isn't determined by the number of likes on a social media post or the opinions of others. A world where you are your own judge. Sounds liberating, doesn't it? The key to this freedom lies within you in the realm of self-love and confidence. It's about acknowledging your worth, embracing your flaws and celebrating your victories, no matter how small. Remember, the most powerful approval comes from within. And here's the twist. The more you approve of yourself, the less you'll need others to do it for you. Self-approval, not external validation, is the real confidence booster. Halfway through, we encountered the happiness handout. This is a common misconception many of us carry, the belief that others hold the key to our joy, our contentment, our happiness. Picture this. A young boy believes that owning a toy car will bring him ultimate happiness. He gets the toy, plays with it, but the happiness fades. Why? Because the source of his happiness was external. It was never truly his. Just like the boy, we often depend on others to make us happy. We place our happiness in their hands, expecting them to hand it out to us at will. But here's the truth, dear listeners. Happiness is an inside job. It must be cultivated within you, nurtured by you, and protected by you. Others can indeed contribute to your happiness. They can amplify it, but they cannot be its creator. They cannot be its keeper. Remember, others can add to your happiness, but they should never be its sole source. As we proceed, let's debunk the perfection illusion. 
Often we unknowingly cultivate a mental image of absolute perfection, expecting others to live up to these standards. But isn't it time we challenge this illusion? Picture a violinist, his every note flawless, his tempo unvarying, yet the performance lacks soul, lacks the human touch. Now imagine a violinist who misses a note, slows down and speeds up, driven by the emotion of the piece. The performance is imperfect, but it resonates, touches hearts, becomes memorable. This is the beauty of imperfections. They make us unique, they make us real. Expecting perfection from others is like expecting a violin to play itself. It's unrealistic, it's unfulfilling, it's unfair. We are not machines programmed for perfection. We are individuals with our quirks, our flaws, our strengths and our weaknesses. Remember this the next time you find yourself expecting perfection. Embrace imperfections, for they make us human. Next, we confront the expectation of unconditional availability. This is the notion that someone should always be at your beck and call, ready to drop everything and attend to your needs. But let me tell you a story. Once there was a woman who believed her friend should always be available. Day or night, rain or shine, she expected her friend to be there. But one day her friend couldn't make it to a lunch date because of a work commitment. The woman was upset, feeling let down. But then she realized she was asking for too much. She was expecting her friend to put her life on hold, which was unfair. This story serves as a reminder that everyone has their own life, their own commitments, their own time. It's unfair to demand someone's unconditional availability. It's vital to understand and respect this boundary. Respect others' time as you would want them to respect yours. Let's now tackle the expectation of constant agreement. Imagine a world where everyone agrees with you all the time. Sounds great, right? Well, not exactly. This expectation is as unrealistic as it is limiting. It's like expecting a rainbow without a little rain or a symphony composed of just one note. Variety, they say, is the spice of life and differing opinions add that much needed zest. Everyone has their own unique perspectives shaped by their experiences and beliefs. These diverse viewpoints are not just inevitable but also beneficial. They challenge our thinking, broaden our horizons and help us grow. They encourage us to question, to explore, and to understand. Just consider a lively dinner table debate where each person brings their own flavour to the mix. It's a feast for the mind, isn't it? So let's appreciate the diversity of thoughts and ideas. Let's see them as a chance to learn, to evolve, and to better ourselves. Differences in opinion are not a threat, but an opportunity for growth. Second to last, we have the responsibility shift. Now, let's dive into a tale to illustrate this point. Picture a man named George. He's a hard-working bloke, always taking on more than he can handle. One day, he decides to delegate some of his tasks to his colleague, Sarah, without her consent. Sarah, already swamped with her own duties, struggles to keep up with the added load. The blame is not on Sarah for failing to deliver, but on George for shifting his responsibilities onto her. This is a classic example of the responsibility shift, the unfair act of making others bear the burden of your duties. It's a reminder that each of us has a personal responsibility to manage our tasks and commitments. We shouldn't expect others to carry the weight of our obligations. It's about stepping up, not stepping aside. So remember, take charge of your responsibilities for they are yours alone. Finally, we reach the reciprocity rule. This principle, often mistaken as a golden rule, stipulates that we should expect the same treatment from others as we accord them. It's a trap, a mirage of fairness that can lead to resentment and disappointment. Consider this. Imagine you're a gardener, tending to a seedling with utmost care, watering it, shielding it from harsh weather, expecting it to bloom. But despite your efforts, it doesn't. Do you punish it? No. You understand that its growth is not a reflection of your care. Similarly, our actions towards others are seeds we plant. We water them with kindness, expecting them to blossom into reciprocal acts. But people, like plants, grow at their own pace, in their own time. Expecting immediate reciprocity can be a fruitless endeavour. Our kindness, our good deeds, should be unconditional, free from the expectation of a return. We must learn to give without expecting to receive, for kindness should be selfless. Here we are at the end of our journey. We've traversed the landscape of human expectations, 
diving deep into the pitfalls that can snare us. We've debunked the myth of mind reading, reminding ourselves that people can't always decipher our thoughts and feelings. We've challenged the change game, understanding that we can't force someone to alter their ways. We've stopped the approval chase, realizing that seeking validation from others is a fruitless endeavor. We've declined the happiness handout, accepting that our joy comes from within, not from others. We've shattered the perfection illusion, embracing the fact that everyone is flawed and unique. We've rescinded the idea of unconditional availability, acknowledging that everyone has their own lives to lead. We've questioned the constant agreement, promoting healthy debate and individual opinions. We've shifted the responsibility back to ourselves, taking full accountability for our actions. Finally, we've broken the reciprocity rule, understanding that not all kindness is returned, and that's okay. Let go of these expectations, and you'll find your relationships becoming more fulfilling and less stressful. Remember, everyone is just trying to navigate their own path in this world.